What's up guys? Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Before we get started, just make sure you take the time at the end of the video to like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate it. Now this is a Gen 2. It is stock sprocket. So the stock on the Gen 2 is uh, 17 in the front and 45 in the rear. So the front on this should say 17T. And then what I've purchased is a 16T. I've mounted my GoPro camera facing more towards the screen, the LCD screen and the tack, so you can see the speed and the tachometer at the same time. So we'll do a before video with the speed and the RPMs with the stock 17 tooth in the front, and then I'll show how to change the sprocket out at the same time because we're changing the sprocket, we have to loosen the rear end and bring the tire forward to loosen the chain to take the sprocket off. So at the same time, what I'll end up doing is uh, I'll show an install of taking the 17T off and reinserting the 16T and then resetting the chain tension on the back. So there'll be kind of a little bit of a combo video there. And then we'll finish with the difference in the speed and the tack with the 16T versus the 17T and just kind of see how it works. The basic principle behind this is if the chain is, the sprocket is smaller on the front, if you make the small the sprocket smaller on the front, what it does is it makes the revolution on the front go around faster and it also makes the revolution go around the rear faster and that's why it actually makes the bike faster. So what you'll end up seeing is you'll just, you'll be changing gears more often. Uh, the, 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 you'll go through gears faster. So what that does is it, it, it shifts the whole gear range towards the beginning and in the end, it takes off your top speed. Now you can reverse this and add bigger gears. You can add a bigger gear to the front and it's gonna do the opposite. It's gonna make it so you have more top end speed. I'm not doing 160 miles an hour down the back roads around where I live. And in the twisties, I'm not on a racetrack or anything like that. So I don't need that uh, GP type speed. So changing the gearing so that the bike is just faster um, up front is going to be a bigger help for me than trying to get more. It'll give you better gas mileage if you go up in the front or even go down in the rear. Uh, but I'm doing it the other way. I'm going to go down in the front. Now you could go up in the rear. Uh, my old bike actually had one tooth down in the front and two teeth up in the rear. It was a big change, but it was an older bike. So it actually just kind of made it more like modern bikes. Now this bike is already modern. It's already a fast bike. It's got plenty of power. It doesn't really need anything. I don't probably push more than 60% of this bike on, on my hardest days. So the bike is way more capable than I am. Um, but what we're gonna do is just switch that gear up uh, before and after and just see what it looks like, see what happens. So thanks for taking the time to watch and uh, just keep watching. We'll wrap this up. Um, and get on the road and get some video and then come back in, do the install, get back on the road and see what it looks like.
Hey guys, I just got the sprocket change finished up. So we've got the old sprocket here. Uh, this is the 17 tooth that I took out from the front under this cover. And as you probably noticed, I had the torque wrench out for a few things. So um, the torque specs for these three Allen head bolts that come out here uh, was like eight pounds. I just did them hand tight. You saw where I loosened up the two nuts on the end of the shift linkage and actually took this shift linkage bar out. Uh, it slides through this channel. There's a tunnel in the frame here that that slides through. Don't try to put it in front or in back. Uh, it just slides through the channel there. I took pictures before and after so I'd see what the thread was because this is actually already preset where I want it for my foot position. So I have uh, I took pictures of the threads top and bottom. There were four threads on the top and nine threads on the bottom. That was where I had it. That didn't have to be where you have it. Uh, that the big nut that was in there, I actually had to break that loose by putting the brake on on the passenger side, right side of the bike, you know, put the fr put the rear brake on, that locks the rear so the sprocket can't move, and then I used my impact to take that nut off. Now that nut had a torque spec of like 61 pounds. The axle nut, that's called the drive, um, the, the drive axle nut or the drive nut or something, but that was 61 foot pounds. And the back axle nut is actually 108 foot pounds, so you probably saw that in the video. A couple of the videos were a little bit backwards. Hopefully I got them all in the right order when I got this video done because um, I had loosened up the rear and pushed, the, pushed this forward, but when I needed to loosen up that axle nut, I actually needed to put the brake on and hold the rear in place. So I pushed it back in place and locked it with that um, axle nut so I wasn't uh, pushing on the brakes um, with anything loose. I didn't want anything getting bound up sideways or crooked. Uh, the let's see so these are 10 millimeter um, I'm not sure what the metric was on that let me see real quick I think it's a five yeah so that's a five um, for the three bolts there for to take the cover off you have to take that shift linkage out first 10 millimeter nuts on the shift linkage it's actually 12 millimeter nuts on the tensioner on the back for the axle the the front sprocket I believe was a 30, the front sprocket, the nut here was a 30 millimeter and the nut for the axle on the other side, on the right side was actually a 32. I got both of those around here somewhere. But you should have been able to see them in the picture. Now, I didn't know that I, I forgot that I had a bigger, I thought that I, I forgot that I had a big enough um, uh, socket to take the axle nut off. So the socket for the axle nut was a 32. Um, so I've got a, you know, deep impact, heavy duty, um, sockets for that so 30 in the front 32 in the rear and then as you saw at the end it's not a torque spec but it's a tension there's a there's an amount of tension that's on this um, chain here and so the tension is set as you saw in the video where at the very top when you're just giving enough pressure to push up on this and then just pushing down from the top of the chain to the bottom of the chain that's the difference that you want which is that uh, 0.7 nine to 1.18 uh, inches. So I put it right at one inch. You could see it came up to about an inch and a half and went down to about two and a half inches. So I've got my adjustment right. Um, everything's tightened up now. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't do a close up, but at the very back here, you can even see, yeah. So at the very back here, there's actually these um, gauges. Let's see if I can drop this down. You wouldn't believe it, my, my uh, my tripod actually broke right before I got started with this whole video, so that was kind of a pain in the butt. I'm gonna have to buy a new. Um, I'm gonna have to buy a new uh, tripod. But here is the back. So there's the increments. You can see there's the very last one on the far right. So if these were like eighth inch increments, then I'm um, what half plus some half an inch plus some to get all the way up to the back of the the axle um, that bracket there and then on the other side it's actually identical and that's the information that they had in the in the the manual you want those to be identical so this is half it's just a little bit over half it's not quite even the that would be if that's an eighth or a sixteenth I'm not sure if that's an actual measurement but whatever these um, increments are here this is where I've moved it to where it's even to the edge of the block. It's the same distance on this side as it is on the other. And what that does is centers the wheel so that the angle of this is not turned one way or the other. You want this to be in the center. So 
now I know that I've got that center. Now, of course, the next step in this whole process is to go out and take the bike for a ride um, and check out the difference in how it feels with the new gearing. So that would be the next step. Uh, I'm gonna clean up a few things off the floor, put a few things back. Uh, if you don't have that, very handy. This is not the full manual with all the torque specs and everything. And you can find those on, I think it's Manuals Live or something like that has it. I looked it up for a 2012 and it doesn't come up for a 2012, but if you just switch it to a 2008 for some reason, it pops right up. So uh, that should be easy enough to find. But like I said, I'm gonna get this, gotta get my hands cleaned up. I don't wanna be greasy riding, but we are gonna take another ride and see what it's like with the new sprocket on the front. Let's check it out.